In this episode, I'm gonna show an extremely fast way to fix the most common color cast that you'll get when you're shooting interior real estate photography. I'm gonna show you how to do it. I'm gonna show you why this works and why it is so flexible, whether you're using HDR, whether you're using flambent, whether you're using single exposure, how it is best applied to those various types of shooting. And then I'm gonna show how to automate it so that in just a few seconds, you can fix that most common type of color cast. Ready to get started? Let's go. So this is the image that we're gonna work with and you can see here in Photoshop, it has a lot of color cast. There's a lot of orange that's on the ceiling, a lot of yellows and oranges. There's a lot of red too. If we zoom in here, we can see there's a lot of red that's up here even on the crown molding, it's in the paint. And this was actually reduced quite a bit because this is your typical flambient shot. You can see here, there's a flash shot and then I've got another flash shot and then the ambient on top of it and then a window pull. So this is stuff you've probably seen me do before. And of course, this did reduce a lot of that color cast because if we take a look at the ambient shot over here in Lightroom, we can see that there was more color cast, but we still have it in our flash shot. So if we were to use just HDR, then we're going to have a little bit more and you can see there's a lot more red and orange color casts. And that's of course coming from very common hardwood floors. It almost doesn't matter what the color of the hardwood floor is. There will be some tone of red to it. That's natural because that's the nature of wood. Wood isn't blue or green, the leaves would be. But also in, when you're doing HDR, you're gonna get other color casts as well. So you're gonna get up here, you can see there's some greens that are coming through. So it's not just the oranges and the yellows. So there is a little bit more work when it comes to doing then HDR using this process. But don't worry, we're gonna cover what's behind the scenes, what makes this happen, the science behind it. So you can actually see then how to quickly adjust it for doing HDR. But when we go back to Flambient, yes, we did greatly reduce the amount of color cast, but it's still there. An empty room like this is inevitable to happen. Even if this had carpet, there's just so much wood it's gonna happen and there's still some type of natural light coming in here reflecting off of that. So the fix I'm gonna show you how to do would be with this adjustment here. And if I were to apply that, you can see that color cast is gone. Now, a lot of it did go away over here at the far end, might make it look unnatural, but this is all adjustable. And I'm gonna show you how to adjust that. But when we go in here and take a look then at where that that color cast was. If we remove the adjustment I'm going to show you how to add, then you'd see there's a lot of color cast that's all over. Once we apply this, which will take just a few seconds, then that is gone. And then it's left up to us on how much of this we want to adjust. So let's turn that off for just a second and let's start from the beginning. Now, what we have to understand first is to address the color itself, we have to understand where that color actually is coming from. Yes, we know it's mostly coming from the floor, the outside, also from these incandescent bulbs. Very typical, even when people have LED bulbs nowadays, they aren't usually 5,500 Kelvin. So a lot of people like that warm look inside their house, so you get this. Now, I know there's this whole lights off crowd that thinks that they can get by with turning this, these lights off. Yes, that'll work in some cases, but if you don't want your house to look like there's a power outage and most realtors want it to look nice and bright and what the lights would actually be doing, then leave them on. And when you're doing flambient, there's no need to worry about that. And of course, even HDR, this will fix it. So the colors that we're talking about here that we need to fix can be seen here on this color wheel. So we can see on this color wheel, if we take a look at the very top, it's known as 60 degrees. Don't worry about that yet. I'm gonna show what that means when we go into the fix. But you can see here that we've got all our various colors. They blend into their various shades. And you might've seen this before if you've worked in graphic arts. What it means for real estate photography, the interiors, they fall in this range right here. It looks very familiar, mostly a lot of oranges, mostly a lot of reds. So as we see that, just remember these numbers that we're above zero, we're below 60 when it comes to this color wheel. And that's going to make a big difference when we go in to make this adjustment. So first, let's take a look at how to do it and then how to make the action for it. So what this involves is some selective saturation within a color range, like we just showed with that color wheel. So to do that, you want to go above your ambient shot. So you don't want this to be applied to the window. So at the very top, that's our window pole. And that's going to maintain the colors outside, the view outside, whether this was cut in using HDR, or in this case, it was a darkened blending mode using 
using the Flambian technique, then this is still above the adjustment that we're going to make. And this is very similar, by the way, in many regards to the various techniques that I show throughout my courses, throughout my books, and especially I address a lot of this in my course on expert editing for real estate photography. If you're not familiar with that or any of my other courses or my books, then I have links to that down in the description for this video. Let's get started on this though. So right above the ambient layer, what you wanna do is go to layer, you want a new adjustment layer, and you want a hue saturation layer. Now we'll call this, uh, we'll call it cast fix. Okay, so we'll just call it that so we can keep track of it. And we'll just say, okay. Now in here, one of the common things that editors that you outsource to will do is they'll just desaturate the whole thing. Hey, look, all the color cast is gone. Well, so is everything else. That's not what we want to do. We want to do it to that area of that color wheel. So what we want to do is since it's in a primary yellow, orange type of reddish area down here, you can see on these bars right here, what you want to do is on this drop down, select yellows. Now what that does is it puts us in a range, but notice these numbers, 15 degrees, 45 degrees, and on this side it's 75 and 105 degrees. If we take a look at that color wheel, we can see those are the same numbers here. So remember what we're shooting for is this range that's right below 60, but it's still above zero. So what you want to do is move these little sliders here that relate to these numbers. So let's start on the left. And what we're going to be doing is adjusting this number here. What we want to first do is adjust this number here to right about zero. And you can see that's moving as I drag this then to the right. So you want that to go the other direction. Sorry about that. You want that to go to about zero. Okay, that is how much is going to be feathered in compared to then this other little slider. This one, we wanna move down to about 20, so right there. Okay, now let's do these other ones. What we wanna do is we want it to fall within the range of about 55, that'll be right below 60. So move this slider, you notice this number here is changing. Move this down to where you're just at about 55, okay. Now for the next one, to feather that in, this upper end here, let's move that to then 65. So we'll move that down so it's just right above there, right at about 65. It doesn't have to be too exact, but if you can get it, all the better. Now you can see we're feathering less into the yellow, we're feathering more into the red, but we're covering the area that's mostly orange. Once again, let's just revisit that on the color wheel. And you can see this is the range that we're working in, but it's feathering just a little bit on either side of it. So once you have this area selected, then what you do is you drop the saturation down to about like about negative 45 or so. That's about midway. Now you can see it did reduce those orange color casts and the yellow color casts and maybe just a little bit too much. So what we do is collapse this and you'll notice here that it has a layer mask. All you have to do is just delete off that layer mask. So let's take the quick selection tool, which will be right here. Make sure it's on plus and sample all layers is checked. We'll just make that really big. We'll click inside of here. You can see it selected the floor part of the cabinets, hit delete, control D to deselect. Go up here to these cabinets, select it, delete that, and the same thing then over here, boom. So now that is selected so that this is only being applied to the other area. So we're maintaining the wood. Now, if the wood was too rich, you could still adjust that further and you could desaturate the ceiling, but let's look at how this differs. So this is with our color cast fix. If I turn it off, that's without it. So once again, fixed and unfixed. Now, if this adjustment is too much, once it's done, then a couple things you can do. One, you can erase some off this layer mask. You can also change the fill that's here. So you could change the fill maybe down to about, oh, 60, 70%, something like that. And then it will have less of an effect. So that's with it filled. This is before you can see, especially if we zoom in over here where we can really see that. So this is with the fill 
at 100%, but then if we drop that fill down to right about 68, 70 and around there, you can see big difference. Once again, just going back and forth, that's 100% and here's a little bit less. So anyways, that's one way to adjust it. We'll go back to 100% here. Okay, now another thing you can still do is you can still edit that area. So we can go in here, double click the little properties icon, go back and select the yellows and you see there's the adjustment. You could either desaturate more or increase it, whatever you want. You could also change the range here as well. Now, if you're doing then HDR, you might wanna make another one of these layers where you would then be making one for the blue because it'd be real common to get a blue reflection off of the floors coming out from uh, the sky. So you get that blue cast. So that's another thing you could do. This is primarily then for fixing flambing because we really don't worry about all those other color casts because they're almost eliminated because of how we're using the flash. Okay, now let's take a look at how to make an action to automate this. Let's turn this off. And to make the action, what we wanna do is to start above the ambient layer. So this is where you would apply the action. Then you wanna bring up your actions window. If you don't see it over here, then you can also bring it up over under window and then under actions, which is Alt F9. So what we're gonna do here, I'll go under our tutorial set. And you can see that I made one here and I'm just going to delete that and start over. We'll just delete that. So wherever you'd like to put your action, then we're going to create a new one. And I'm gonna do it by clicking this little plus icon. So we'll call this one the cast fix, and you can also call it yellow to keep track of it if you're making other ones for blues or whatnot. And then I'm gonna select a function key to associate it with. So that way I can just press a key on the keyboard and be done with it. And we'll do, let's say F2 shift control, and that'll then do it. Okay, so what we'll do then is start recording. So once you press that, you can see the little red icon, it's now recording our actions. And what we'll do now is like we did before, we'll go to layer, new adjustment layer, hue saturation. And we'll call this cast fix. And since it is for that action, we'll call it yellow also. Click OK. Then the next thing is we want to select from here our yellows. And then we want to make those same adjustments. So remember here, we're going to take this down to let's say zero. And then we're going to take this slider here. We're going to move that down to 20. We're going to take this slider here, and then we're going to move that down to 55. And then we're going to take this slider here and move this down to 65. Now, after we have that adjusted, we'll decrease the saturation probably about halfway, right about there. Bring back up the action window now, which is going to be collapsed if you had your properties up. So bring that up and just press this, which will stop. And now that action is recorded. And you can see it's assigned to shift control F2. So now to test that out, we'll just hide that. We'll go right above the ambient layer and do control shift F2 and there it is, boom. Automatically made that for us. Now all we have to do are things like we did before. We would take the quick selection tool, we would delete this stuff off of there really fast, no big deal, very quickly to get rid of a lot of this and we're basically done. So just a few seconds to do this entire thing and then you can further adjust it as you want. Once again, adjusting fill or deleting off the mask or once again, going back and adjusting the saturation properties.